Hello and welcome to the Doctors Who Read Stuff. I'm Chip. Um, without Brian and Chris today, uh, we're going to try to do some more of these one-off videos talking about um, things of interest, things we've read, things we want to read, you know, favorite books, talk about kind of what's on our bookshelves, um, stuff like that. So this is my first foray into this. Um, I'm going to talk about a uh, one of the Star Wars novels today. Um, I tend to read a lot. Um, you know, it's still 2020. There's still a pandemic. Um, and I've been reading more than I probably did before the pandemic, even though I read quite a bit even before. But um, I've been going back to more um, fun, kind of familiar settings. Um, I'll read everything from sci-fi to fantasy to dramatic fiction to action adventure to literary stuff. I was an English major, so nothing's really off limits for things I've read. And if we get into some of my favorite books, if we do one of these with kind of favorite things I've read, there will be quite a variety um, in there. But uh, I, I've been wanting to go back to things that are familiar, that are fun, uh, characters I know. So um, having rewatched uh, the, the sequel of all the Star Wars trilogies uh, over the holidays last year, so into 2019, we have took all, um, I guess, 11 movies now, um, you know, because the new one had just come out. So we kind of watched all of them up to uh, The Rise of Skywalker and then saw that. So I wanted to go and read, um, I read the Timothy Zahn books in the early 90s. This one is uh, the New Jedi Order series. Uh, this one's called Vector Prime. It was the first of the New Jedi Order series um, written by R.A. Salvatore, who is a pretty accomplished author in his own right. He's got multi-million copies of books sold. He's been on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, I knew him from Dungeons and Dragons, the Forgotten Realms books that he did, uh, Drizzt, the, uh, the Dark Elf that I think he may have created that character, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, fairly well-known author, at least in the sci-fi fantasy genre. He, um, he picks up these characters, which I, I imagine that would be a challenging thing to do as an author, to pick up characters that aren't yours but you know them very well. Everybody knows them very well from the movies and all the different things that have come out around these characters, other books, comics, um, even the Star Wars Holiday Special. But um, to take those characters and to continue their story, so the, the story in Vector Prime picks up about 20, 25 years after the events of Return of the Jedi. Uh, Luke is married to a woman named Mara Jade. Uh, they're both Jedi. They are... Jedi masters train Padawan learners and other Jedi in their skills. He's training um, Han's kids. So Han and Leia are married. Then they have three kids. They have twin boys and then an older daughter. And I believe they're all um, basically in the Jedi training, you know, with Luke and um, are all very strong in the Force. Uh, Chewbacca's back, of course, with Han. Uh, Lando makes an appearance, um, and then of course we've got R2 and 3PO, so all these characters that we already know, and for the most part I think Salvatore does a good job of taking these characters we know and aging them up, you know, 20, 25 years, and continuing their story, um, which I don't think would be an easy thing to do. There's a few things that feel forced. Han's kind of curmudgeonly and he not that he wasn't in the original movies but he was more snarky and cocky and had some attitude now he just feels kind of old and kind of kind of prickish you know if you will just you know not the nicest guy not a bad guy but just he's not as kind of doesn't have the swagger that he did in in the movies uh luke's pretty subdued and quiet uh leia's not really in it a lot um and then you know, Lando's in it some. Um, I don't know. It just, it was hard to reimagine the characters as well. I think Salvatore did a decent job of it, but I think that would have been hard regardless of who picked it up and wrote it. Uh, the one thing I didn't like, they, I think that they were trying to go for an edgier Star Wars universe. So things where the, the danger is real, the villains are nasty. I like that. I like that aspect of it. And we'll get to them in a little bit here. But one thing I didn't like, and um, I am going to talk a few spoilers here. So uh, if you don't want to be spoiled on the book, um, I'll give you a second here to jump off. But one of the big spoilers in the book is that they kill off one of the main characters. 
And I'm not opposed to having them kill off a main character, but I'd rather it be done in a way that didn't feel forced. This one just felt like it, it, it's Chewbacca. They give him a hero's death, so they're trying to save this planet from you know, destruction. Chewie's on the planet rescuing people, and they basically can't get in to rescue him. He, sa he saves one of Han's sons in the process of losing his own life. So, so they give him this hero's death, but it just felt like this whole scene was kind of just like thrust on you. I d it didn't feel like it was an organic thing. It just, it didn't feel right. And I don't know if it didn't feel right because I didn't want Chewie to die because he's my favorite character from the movies, or if it just didn't fit the story. So I'd be curious to know what other people's thoughts are on that. It, I don't know if that was Salvatore's decision or if other people that were involved in the production of the book um, kind of had some control over the plot lines. Who knows? But I didn't necessarily like that aspect. What I did like a lot was the villains. So the villains in this are the Yuzhan Vong. Hopefully I'm saying that right. They are... Um, uh, from outside the galaxy, so they enter through, they enter into the the galaxy far, far away that we know and love, um, somewhere in the outer rim. And these villains are they're they're big. They're I like that their their whole technology is based on or, organic matter and like biological things. So they have living ships. They have you know their armor and weapons are all living things. They have um, the easiest thing to call maybe like a skin suit. It's basically an organic creature that allows them to basically wear them and appear human or appear as something other than what they are. So that's how they slowly kind of infiltrate into the universe or into the galaxy. And then they start bringing their monster, like the big motherships, and start basically trying to take over some planets in the outer rim. But, but they are dark. They are almost like a religious fanatic society so they have these deities that they worship they like I said they have these organic weapons they have these organic um, body armor and suits and different ways that they can kind of manipulate what they look like um, in their natural form they're all like very scars so they're proud of their battle scars they're proud of um, they've got tattoos they've got just um, I don't know if it's like the uh, you know like the roughest biker bar in town that you know, that's these kind of, you know, rough, tough individuals, very proud of their, kind of maybe not unlike the Klingons in Star Trek, um, very proud of their warrior type race and their conquests. And, and it sounds like in the book that they've basically just ravaged the galaxy that they're from and they're in need of new resources and new worlds to conquer. So here they come. So the, the plot device to get them there isn't anything revolutionary or, or cool, real cool, but but the actual concept of this species is is pretty cool. So I did like that aspect of it. Uh, they've introduced a few new characters in it. So I said Kip Daran is one of uh, Luke's early students who's grown into a Jedi Master. And he's pretty cocky and has kind of that swagger that Han used to have. Um, but he kind of gets his um, comeuppance, um, gets beat down pretty good and has to have some lessons in humility. Um, there's some other stuff that goes on, but uh, overall, I enjoyed the book. It was, I think that it would have made for a better sequel movie than uh, what we got out of Disney. I know that I didn't dislike the Disney movies. They were fun, but they were, they were a rehash of the original trilogy. You know, especially Force Awakens just mirrors A New Hope. Not line for line, scene for scene, but the storyline is pretty much the same. Um, this storyline would have been a lot different. Um, it would have been given, you know, a different enemy instead of the Galactic Empire. Um, so it might have been interesting to see what kind of a government the, you know, now that the uh, the rebels overthrew the Empire, what kind of a government did they set up and did they establish? And, you know, how did they, you know, manage and govern the galaxy in absence of the Empire? Who knows? Um, but I, I did enjoy most of it. The the original or the the sequel trilogy, had they gone this route, I don't I couldn't I couldn't see Disney doing this um, just from the dark aspect of the Yuzhan Vong. Um, 
I couldn't see Disney killing off a main character, although it would have been interesting. They, I guess they did kill off Han Solo. It would have been interesting in the book had they killed off Han instead of Chewie and left the kids, not necessarily orphaned, but just with Leia, so a single mother raising her three kids. That seems like it would have fit into the Disney universe. You know, you've got a lot of stories in Disney around orphans or something's happened to a parent and these kids grow up to do pretty cool and kick-ass things, um, you know, so, so that could have been a good Disney plot line. But I guess in summation, I, I, would, I would recommend the book. I would give it probably, it's, it's average. It's three out of five stars if I were to give it a rating. Um, you know, and I wouldn't give five stars to very many books. There's a handful, and we'll talk about those someday. But um, I think that it's worth time. If you enjoy the Star Wars universe, so this is going to be sound like a cop-out, but if you like Star Wars, you like the characters, you kind of want to see other ways they could have taken the story after the Return of the Jedi, then I think that uh, you'll probably enjoy it. Um, otherwise, maybe try some other books, uh, and hopefully we'll talk uh, soon again about some of these other books on my shelf. Uh, like I said, we're doing Dune right now, um, but we've got some other books in the works. Um, I do want to talk about uh, I want to talk about this one in a future episode, so I want to talk about Malazan, the Book of the Fallen, so that's the first of the Malazan books. Um, talk about world building. It's it's pretty amazing what Erickson has done in that in that whole series of books, which is kind of a, akin to Wheel of Time. It takes up a whole couple of shelves on the bookshelf here. So, anyway, um, until next time. Today, uh, like I said, we talked through kind of my quick review of uh, the New Jedi Order, uh, Vector Prime, the first book in the New Jedi Order by R. A. Salvatore. I would give it an average review and. I'd recommend it if you want something fun, quick, easy. It's kind of like a summer read. So anyway, uh, until next time, in lieu of Chris and Brian being here, Alon's.